Let's speak now to Dr. Sri Ramchaulia. He's professor and dean of the Jindal School of International Affairs at Jindal Global University in New Delhi. Dr. Chaulia, the voice and presence of thousands on South Korean streets is well documented. What is it about this particular scandal which seems to have ignited millions for months? I think it's a moment of democratic catharsis. Um, South Korea has had um, democracy in the Sixth Republic since 1987. But uh, the crony capitalism, uh, especially of the Chaebols, uh, which are the big industrial conglomerates uh, and who are closely networked with uh, political leaders, has always riled uh, average South Koreans, especially the younger generation. So younger South Koreans protested and came out in a big way against President Park and what they see as a rotten regime which has not been able to uh, meet the aspirations of ordinary people and which is perceived to be in the pockets of the Chaebols. So I think it's been building up the momentum towards this um, you know in the past some major conglomerates uh, like LG and Samsung and many of them have been indicted uh, for high level corruption and bribery and fraud but they have not been jailed but now we are seeing something different the Samsung's leader uh, is being sent to jail so there is I think a push towards a greater democratization and that's why I think this particular scandal really is seen as maybe a transformative moment 30 years uh, since the restoration of democracy perhaps this is seen as a second revolution. Now, what would be the key geopolitical concern with this power vacuum now in the whole of the Korean Peninsula? I think uh, there is, of course, uh, the always the unpredictable factor of Kim Jong-un's North Korea and their uh, trigger-happy um, leadership that wants to keep on provoking the region through uh, missile and nuclear tests. And uh, that, in return, has uh, led to speedy deployment of the terminal high-altitude uh, area defense uh, anti-missile system by the Americans in South Korea. But now, with the ouster of President Park, I think all of these are up in the air. There's a lot of uncertainty and strategic instability stability that's coming in because the Moon Jae-in, um, the, the liberal uh, candidate for presidency who's likely to win, has a, a more balanced approach and believes that South Korea should not antagonize China uh, and therefore uh, and also uh, not uh, be too hostile to North Korea but be accommodating to it. So what this means is actually we may see a reversal of the last 10 years of policies which are more hardline by the U.S. and its allies in the region. Now there may be a more um, reconcili reconciliation uh, um, uh, process that may uh, begin again. But whether it will stop our, uh, Kim Jong-un or not in his tracks is the big question because he has domestic political reasons for uh, this militaristic attitude. It's not just foreign policy issue in North Korea. And this has ties with the regime stability in North Korea. So the wild card really is Kim Jong-un and whether he will play along with the new dispensation that comes into uh, 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 being in, in South Korea. Dr. Chawla, just finally, on that front, uh, South Korea and India signed an agreement not too long ago to share information on the nuclear powers in their respective neighborhoods. What would you say India and even China today would be looking for in the next administration? I think for India, uh, we have a bipartisan foreign policy towards both liberal and conservative uh, governments in South Korea. Uh, we have built very strong strategic ties and economic links with South Korea in the last uh, decade or so. Uh, so we will be also watching with concern. Uh, we have worked with the South Koreans to interdict um, illicit uh, nuclear fuel and materials uh, that the North Korean regime may be smuggling. And there is also a strong strategic partnership between India and the United States. So for all these reasons, uh, we will be watching with concern uh, how the new regime transition happens in Seoul. Um, as far as China goes, I think this is the most favorable outcome for them because they would always prefer a liberal regime in South Korea than a conservative one which is very hardline in its approach uh, towards North Korea. So I think the Chinese will see this as a great moment and will seize upon this and will want to work with Moon Jae-in, who's likely to be the next president, to try and rearrange the strategic balance in Asia in their favor. Already the Philippine president, Rodrigo Duterte, has turned pro-Chinese, so to say, and Malaysia is also showing greater inclination towards China. So I think they'll be looking at ensnaring uh, South Korea away from the U.S. orbit and closer to China. And I think that's the big shift that we may be witnessing uh, later this year as the new regime uh, uh, change happens in Seoul. Dr. Sriram Chalia, thank you very much for your analysis today.